Welcome everyone to Monday Morning Morons for October 30th, 2017. This week, let's begin with one of the most absolutely ridiculous things I've ever heard. Professor, algebra, geometry, perpetuate white privilege. A math education professor at the University of Illinois argued in a newly published book that algebraic and geometry skills perpetuate unearned privilege among whites. <laughs> Okay, new proposal. From now on, anyone who says such utterly ridiculous shit should have their teaching license revoked. You're obviously too retarded to teach. Rochelle Gutierrez, a professor at the University of Illinois, made the claim in a new anthology for math teachers, arguing that teachers must be aware of the politics that mathematics brings in society. Yeah, um... The only politics being brought into math here are yours. So the solution is really quite easy. Stop doing it. On many levels, mathematics itself operates as whiteness. Who gets credit for doing and developing mathematics? Who is capable in mathematics? And who is seen as part of the mathematical community is generally viewed as white, Gutierrez argued. Right, so because some white guy proposed that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we're perpetuating white privilege by acknowledging that he was right and giving him credit for figuring that out? In other words, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, the fact that the guy who figured it out is white makes the theory and by extension all of mathematics racist? Okay, I'm really stretching the limits of my brain here, trying to understand how that makes any damn sense. Are we really that smart just because we do mathematics, she asks? Well, I think you've answered that question for us. No. No, you obviously are not. Look, lady, the beauty of math is that it's either right or wrong. And the color of your skin or the country you were born in or what you call God doesn't change any of that regardless of who created it. Unless, of course, you're trying to argue that people of color simply can't learn math. And if that's what you're getting at, then you are the racist in this story, not math. Okay, so what else is magically racist this week, Bob? Feminist professor says traditional science is rooted in racism. <laughs> so, I'll see your racist math and raise you all science. A feminist professor at the University of California, Davis, has vowed to challenge the authority of science by rewriting knowledge through a feminist lens. A feminist lens doesn't rewrite knowledge, it erases it and replaces it with crap. Sarah Giordano, who left the field of neuroscience to become a women's study professor at UC Davis, opened up about her feelings toward the sciences in a recent essay for Catalyst, a journal of feminist theory. Wait, you left neuroscience to teach women's studies? <laughs> Gee, I wonder why there's so few women in STEM. Must be the patriarchy. Dirty, rotten men forced her to run off and teach bullshit. Science, she worries, has earned its epistemic authority through its co-constitution with colonization and slavery, and therefore relies on a colonial and racialized form of power. Ugh, not this shit again. Look. I don't give a fuck if Hitler himself discovered the laws of motion. That doesn't change the fact that they're correct. Like math, that's the glory of real science. The skin color of the person who discovered magnetism or articulated the laws of thermodynamics is irrelevant. If a black guy came up with the theory of general relativity, it'd still be just as valid. So the fact that a white guy did it doesn't magically make it racist. However, Giordano is hopeful that feminists can work toward creating new approaches that don't conflate science with truth. We need to disrupt the epistemic authority of science and the assumption that science equals truth. Giordano writes, further arguing that this can be done by implementing a feminist science practice that explicitly unsticks science from truth. <laughs> You don't have to do a thing. Feminist science is already detached from truth. What's next, Bob? Free cash for everyone? Stockton, California's mayor plans to see if it works. Sounds great. What could possibly go wrong with that? 
Today, Tubbs is Stockton's 27-year-old mayor. Last week, he announced the launch of an experimental program that will give people like his mom about $500 a month with no strings attached. Stockton will likely become the first city in the nation to test out a version of universal basic income, an economic system that would regularly provide all residents enough money to cover basic expenses with no conditions or restrictions. Uh-huh. The government is just going to give everyone free money. That seriously sounds like the greatest idea ever. Oh, wait. One teeny itsy bitsy little problem with your plan. The government has no money. Seriously, this is why all these college kids should be forced to take at least entry-level economics and a government class. They don't understand how either of these things actually work in the real world. Let me enlighten you morons. As I said, the government literally has zero money. None. Zip. Zilch. Nada. Every single penny that the government spends comes from you, the taxpayer. Which means that every single penny the government gives to these people is quite literally taken from someone else. Now, don't get me wrong, such a program on a small scale could work for a while. However, it can quite literally never be fair to everyone because you have to take someone else's money from them. Now, suppose you expand this program to everyone in order to be fair. Do the math. In order to give everyone $500 a month, I'd have to take $500 a month from everyone. You've quite literally accomplished absolutely nothing. I'm taking your money, then giving it back. What's the fucking point of that? Joe Biden, former Obama Council Economic Advisors Chair Jason Furman, and Center for American Progress President Neera Tandon have all opposed the idea for another reason. They say giving people enough money to live on will drive them out of the workforce, and that having a job is essential for emotional health and social status. And there's that too. How many people actually work because they want to? Some, sure. Some people are lucky enough to be able to do the work they really want to do and have jobs they really like. Most of us do not. We work because we have to. And we work shitty jobs because we have to. You think anybody is going to work in the sewers if they didn't have to? You think garbage men do that job because they just love riding around and picking up our stinky shit? Give everyone a basic income and all of a sudden, people are no longer willing to do those jobs. Now what? You're going to have to force people to do them because, like it or not, these jobs need to be done. And of course, to ensure we get the right number of people doing this stuff in the right places, we'll have to have centralized control over job placement. You see where this is going by now, right? Is it any wonder these people are pushing this idea then? It will lead to exactly what they've been asking for. Communism. Trouble is, it doesn't lead to the happy-go-lucky communist utopia they're dreaming of. It leads to Soviet-era Russian communism. Do we really want that? I sure as fuck don't. Okay, Bob, give us the toxic masculinity. Mom who beat girl for incorrect Bible verses gets prison. A Pennsylvania woman who beat and tried to strangle her daughter for incorrectly reciting Bible verses has been sentenced to prison. 41-year-old Rhonda Schaffner was sentenced Wednesday to two and a half to five years in prison after pleading guilty to charges including aggravated assault of her daughter who was younger than 13. Police say the girl was forced to kneel on the bathroom floor of Schaffner's middle town home and repeat Bible verses. They say Schaffner slammed her head into the wall each time she made a mistake. They say Schaffner also told the child she was going to kill her and attempted to strangle her. Police say the girl fought off Schaffner, who told her to leave and never return. The girl called her father, who drove her to a police station. Well, there you have it. That horrible, toxic father took away this woman's daughter and then the patriarchy's police force arrested her, and the white supremacist capitalist court system sent her to jail for just trying to teach that little girl the Bible. Okay, so last week it kind of dawned on me that every week I keep sending you all off on a bit of a downer. These toxic masculinity segments aren't exactly funny or uplifting, so instead of finishing off with those, let's try to finish up with something a little more positive. This week it comes from an article, Defiatance, Defiant, I, I'm actually not even sure how to pronounce your username, so if I fuck that up, let me know. Anyway, he shared an article with me on Minds, and it was kind of funny, so let's go over that one. Mansplaining? Windbags come in both genders. Last year was a big one for criticizing men. 
Sometimes it was constructive, if contentious, like the scrutiny applied to policing or various forms of sexual and domestic violence. Other times, however, it was more gimmick than anything else. Take the mansplaining meme. The portmanteau of man and explain emerged a few years ago in response to an essay by Rebecca Solnit, who described meeting a man who tried to school her about a book she herself had written. Now, I'm not going to read the whole column to you, but as usual, it's linked below so you can check it out for yourself. I'm just going to give you a couple of parts that made me laugh. But a watered-down definition isn't the only flaw in the mansplaining phenomenon. A bigger problem, at least according to my extensive and highly scientific anecdotal research, is that when it comes to unsolicited preaching, there's nothing a man can do that a woman can't do better. <laughs> Which means that men most likely can't have a monopoly on monologizing. If you don't believe me, try to think back on the last time you nodded frantically while waiting for someone to stop talking. Think of the last time this sequence of thoughts passed through your mind. I guess I should pay attention, since this person is an expert. Hmm, why do I feel like I'm being judged right now? Wait, did I give some indication that my life is a mess and that I need help? Why are we suddenly talking about juicing? If this sounds familiar, chances are you were on the receiving end of what I can only think of as a lady lecture. A lady lecture. <laughs> I like it. Like the mansplanation, the lady lecture is condescending, impervious to social cues, and goes on too long. But unlike mansplaining, which is mostly a process of converting insecurity and social anxiety into tedious but essentially harmless hot air, lady lecturing imposes demands on the listener. It asks us not only to pay rapt attention, but also to declare ourselves converts to whatever cause is being championed. It asks us to ensure the lecturer that we plan to run home and implement her advice about relationships, dog training, weight, and that we can't believe our great luck to have run into her at this party, dog park, pinkberry line. Frankly, I'd rather listen to someone explain my own book to me. <laughs> you know, beyond just being funny, she makes an interesting point. Typical mansplaining that these feminists bitch about is just men blowing hot air. Whether it's just a lame attempt to impress a woman with our knowledge or some misguided attempt to teach her something that we think would help her to know, it's pretty harmless and easily ignored because he doesn't expect you to actively participate in the explaining. Women, however, do. Which one is more annoying? The reality is that splaining is everywhere and it's ultimately not gender specific. Let's face it, the world is brimming with blustering self-appointed experts. Exactly. Some people just love to explain shit and impress us all with their supposed expertise. Men, women, or the other 70 plus made up genders makes no difference. But you know the mantra, women are victims, men are oppressors, and feminism is just about equality. I'll see you all next time.